How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games, and we're on the next episode of previous DBS, being the fifth, uh, 65th episode, and we're going over a load more spawners from set 20, all the rest of them, like, so the rest of the set is actually spawned now, so we know all the cards in the set, and we've got a few TPs as well, we've seen the last secret rare, we've even seen some of the 2023 regional season prizes and participation stuff. So we've got a lot to go over to, a very, it's probably looking to be a very long episode, and we're going to start off with going through the set 20 spoilers, then we'll look at the TPs, and then also then go into the 2023 uh, regional season information we got. So stay tuned, we're going to check all that out, and before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, it helps the channel greatly, we're on our way to 1000 subs, we're over halfway there, and it'd be nice to get there this year, and that's what my aim is to do. So without further ado, let's have a look and see what we got revealed this week. So we start off with red. We finally got the um, red spot. This is when we had a, like, kind of a, a little bit of a little bit of a leak going on, but also a little bit of a hint what it's going to be like with the world promo showing off the backside leader and one of the Z battle cards for red. But the other side of red, as we saw cause from those little uh, hints from Worlds, it was U7 for red. And we also got the other side being U3. So for red, it's the fight between Universe 3 when they go into Analyzer and Universe 7 fighting against them. So for the leader, it's a pretty nice one. We've got Paparoni as the front side. And then they, when it flips over, they go into Warriors of Universe 3 United as one. It's a nice little thing again with the Universe United. It'd be nice if we got one for every universe that took part in the... Um, Storm of Power, the Universal Survival Arc. It'd be nice if every single leader got their own, like every universe got their own little leader like this, some kind of archetype, that'd be pretty nice. But then that could be something that could happen. We'll wait and see, depending on how Bandai wants to, wants to do with that. But with this one, Universe 3, start off with um, Pepperoni on his front side, just a 10k. When it attacks draws one, is his auto, pretty standard. And he's got Awaken, which I can always see with most of them have an alternative Awakening condition as well built in. And for Paparonis, it's when your life's at 4 or less, or one or more Koitsukai, Panchia, and Bolorato cards. All red are in your energy, Z energy, battle area, and or drop. So any of those four areas they need to be in, at least one, one or more of them. And you need one of each of them as well, because it says and. And then you, once you, if you meet those conditions, you then draw a card, untap an energy, take your life down to 6 if you're higher, and then flip over. As we know now that Awaken has the flip leader over as part of his actual mechanic now. It's not in, no longer in the text. And then now when you're at Warriors of Unit 3, United 1, you now have a different auto, which is when this card attacks. Look up the top 5 cards of your deck. Add up to 1 red Universe 3 card among them to your hand and shuffle your decks. So you longer, no longer just draw a card. You have to, you get the search for a Universe 3, which this deck is chock full of Universe 3 cards. You see, you're most likely not going to whiff unless you put in a bit too many... Like generic cards or extra cards stuff that aren't universe free that you might have an issue there but it's funny how you go from destroying one to flipping to searching from the leader for an awakening when normally you do the reverse you normally the front side is like a, maybe a searcher then when you flip over you didn't just stand for one but it's kind of a reverse for this one and it's also got an activate main which is for paying one red if your life is a free or less you have four more energy and you send one Quartzakai card one panchita card and one bolorata card all red from your drop to your warp as the cost, you get to play up to one red Quich Quichiratir. I think I, don't, I, I can't remember really the new names, these are the difficult ones. Quichiratir card with an energy cost of four from your deck or drop. Shuffle your deck if you look through it and negate the skill for the game. So you get a one time use to bring out this uh, Quichiratir card, which is the one that they are before they go, well, well those three fuse into, before they go into Analyzer. So it's quite interesting, not sure how strong that be as leader, it's quite interesting. And there's no Z leader for the red leaders as well, which is um, one thing I thought it'd be more like, it looked like it was going through with this set being all, most of the deck, mostly all the decks got a Z leader, like we already saw with blue, that Android 18 got one, but Android 21 didn't. And we're not getting any Z leaders for red, so there's only three decks that don't get a Z, any Z leaders, but they get a ton of Z cards each, which is quite cool. Well, I say a ton, they get a fair few. And also, like all the decks in it, each got their own extra card that supports that deck. And for this one, it's Paparoni's Tactical Orders. It's a one cost extra card with an accurate main. If your leader is a red universe free card, choose up to one Analyzer or Correctorator card, or Kochi Arator. 
card, both red and with any battle area, and place up to two red universe free cards with energy cost of three or less when you drop on the chosen card. So you're trying to just basically pay in energy to place under placing cards under your big bosses, like your big and pseudo boss. So so you trigger some effects, we'll see you normally need a certain amount of cards under it or certain cards under it to fill off effects. So that's the leader, now we'll go into some of the deck. We've got the two Z leader or two Z cards, Z battle cards that the deck has. We've got co uh co the masterwork and analyzer dimension bender. So Kochi is a two cost twenty K that requires two Z energy and analyzer is a four cost twenty five K that requires three Z energy. But the important thing for this is that you can kind of cheat analyzer through Kochi and that's, and even though it's unique is dot Z stack one, which is to place a red analyzer battle card from your Z deck under this card when you play it from your Z deck. So that's quite interesting. So you can get to play that out, play the analyzer from your, un, from, a, uh, from your Z deck underneath it, and there's a way to bring it out, which you see in a sec. But it does have an auto when this card is played. Choose up to one Korsakai card, one Panchita card, and one uh, Bolorata card, all red from your hand, battle area, and or drop, and place it under this card, and then until the end of your opponent's next turn, this card gains power, barrier. So it gives himself a little bit of protection, and puts some cards underneath it, which is quite cool. And then you've got the activate main, which is the mid one for two red. Place up, place three cards from under this card in the earnest drops, so you get you hopefully get three from the auto. And place one pepperoni card from your hand or ballery in his earnest drop. So we'll see what pepperoni does in a bit. And you get to play it to one analyze a Z battle card from this card and place it in, place this card under the played card. So that's pretty cool. How you bring this guy out. And you get a swing with it, then you get to use the activate main. You are, when you bring it out, you place three cards underneath it to get those three required for the activate main, and you just need then the pepperoni from your hand or barrier. And then you get to protect it with barrier, which even though there's a lot more barrier movement nowadays, it's still it's nice to have a little bit of protection. And then you get to, in the next turn, if it survives, or if you can do it the same turn, pay two to sack off the three underneath it, sack off the pepperoni, and then play the analyzer you. Uh, have under it from your C stack into the board, place card under it, then you have an analyzer out on board. And this analyzer has deflect and double strike, two autos and an activate main. So the first one is when this card is played, draw one card, place up to one pepperoni card, Korsika card and Panchia card, and one Bolorato card, all red from your battle area, and it will drop under this card, and this card gets power for the turn. So that's quite cool. So you get to have this Koichi, Koichi underneath it, then you get to put those for every four cards you sent. To trick, bring this out underneath it and draw one, so you plus there, and you give it power for the turn, and that's pretty nice having a power double striker. But it can get gets even better though because we got the auto once every auto once once per turn when this card attacks for every two cards underneath it, choose up to one of your opponent's battle battle cards or unisons, and it gets minus thirty k power for the turn. So I've seen people ask about can you target the same card with this effect twice? No, you cannot. You can only target. You can go off target. Different, uh, different targets. You can't just target the same, um, the same card for each time. You got to choose one each. But that's nice work. Being able to attack and then essentially, if you got six underneath under, underneath it, which is what you're going to need for the activate main, you get the minus three things for 30k power, which is pretty strong. And then the activate main once per turn, place up to one red universe free card from your hand under this card. And additionally, if there are six or more cards underneath this card, this card gains dual attack for the turn. So that's pretty cool because you'll be getting five underneath it by playing the, uh, playing out from the Koichi, which puts itself underneath it. Grabbing back the four cards you sent to build the play out from underneath Koichi, underneath it, it puts five. And then use the activate main, put one more, and you've got the six underneath it that just said swing. Uh, we'll have a dual attacking, double strike uh, 25k, which might even be stronger depending on what some of the cards do. And get to minus things by 30k, which is really, really strong. So this is Zuzi battle cards, and let's have a look at the more the universe free cards for the deck. So we got Koitsukai, Pantia, and Bolorata, the Warriors of Universe 3. So they're one drops of 4k power. And they all have some interesting effects to go with the whole theme of Z stacking. So we've got Koitsukai, has got Uni Absorb, limit one for one red. If your leader is a red unit free card, and you choose one Pantia card and a Bolorata card, both red from your hand, Baller and or drop, and place them under this card. Play up to one red Ko uh, Koichi. Or Koichi after eighter card with an energy cost of four in your deck or drop on top of this card, drop it in your deck if you look through it. So this is giving me giving me a lot of um Roto vibes because it seems it has like same color, same kind of theme of like doing this whole fusion with like a little gang to bring out this um 
these are our things going to a big boss. This basically just seems like a copy and paste of Ryoto, just with maybe a bit, a few more tweaks and yeah, a little bit different. Like they, they don't have Aiden either in the special traits I've noticed that most of the time when they got the different universe they have alien as well these ones don't either because they're not aliens or because they're machines I'm not sure but that's an interesting uh, thing but it also has an auto limit one if if your leader is a red universe free card when this card is played from your hand add up to one Panchia or Badarata card both red with energy cost of one from your deck to your hand then shuffle your deck so that's yeah this basically just gives up that seems like um I can't remember which one it's called in real though because even though I love the deck, I can't remember the names all the time. But I think it's Nezi. I think I think it might be Nezi. Like they have this this seems the same as the Nezi card. But the benefit is that Nezi has barrier and can be played out for free off the leader. And kind of does the same kind of thing. And then we got Panchi and Bolorata. They both have the same permanent, well while this card is under analyzer or Koichi Eraser card, both red in your battle area. The card above it gets 5k power. So that's just a permanent if you have both of these under your cards, which you're going to want to put these cards underneath your Analyzer Z Battle card or Quartierito. And I get an extra 1000 power for the, just permanently while they're underneath it, which is really, really nice. And they both have the same kind of auto, um, where if your leader is a red universe free card, when this card is played from your hand, add up one of the other two from your deck that are both red when she goes to one to your hand and it shuffle your deck. So they basically search, they search each other. But the benefit they have over the, the this looks exactly like the roller deck with Koitsi being the main guy to start Union Fusion and the other two to basically just be searchers as well. I said they have a little, little bit of differences and Koitsi, Koitsi Kai doesn't have the barrier that um, Nezi does in Rodo and the other two have that permanent where they give them a power boost to card they're underneath. But they all have also have the little benefit of not being after searching a certain card from the deck, they can search either the other two. Which has got that a little bit more of a benefit. So far, it just sees a repeat real deck so far. Then we got more of uh, Quetzalcai, Panchi, and Bolorata. This time they're team attackers. They're all free costs with 10k power. And I think they all have the same permanent where for each red universe free card in your energy, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. And Bolorata is a counter attack as well. So they all got they all got some skills. So they either got two autos like Quetzalcai Panchi does. But Bolorato has a counter attack and an auto. So Quetzalcai's autos are both limit one. First one is when this card is played. Look at the top five cards of your deck. And it's one red universe free card among your hand and shuffle your deck. So the search for the deck. And then the other one is also when this card is placed in from your hand or drop area under an analyzed card or a Quetzalcai or a card, both red and in your battle area. Choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and give it minus 10k power for the turn. So you get a little minus when you do the absorb thing, which is pretty cool. Goes in the thing with red. Then Panchia, his first auto is when his card's played, draw one. And his autos are both limit one. And he's the cantrip, which like most decks you get, they get one search and one cantrip. And those Quetzalcai and Panchia are those. And it has the same auto as Quetzalcai. And same with Bolorata, they also have the same last auto. And then Bolorata's ever skill is an auto like the other two, it's a counter attack, which is limit one to get the attack play this card, and then this card gets blocked for the turn. So that's quite nice. Be able to just throw energy, negate an attack, and give yourself a blocker on the board to defend another attack. It's quite cool. But not too much, quite decent, a nice little bit of um synergy with um go being consistent, getting that search ability and stuff like that, it's pretty nice. But so far, yeah, just copy rinse and repeat of Rildo. And then we have some normal boss cards and we have the Paparoni card as well. So we have Koichi Arator, Plan X Activation, Analyzer, Universe Freeze Ultimate Weapon. So that is if you remember, if you ever watched the anime for this um which this is based on. And then Paparoni, the brains of Universe Free. So Koichi is a four cost 15k deflect. And also when this card is played, play up to one red universe free card and she goes to one from your hand or drop in rest mode. That's quite nice. You get to play this out, play it up, one drop out. So that's a good way of how you can get the paparoni out if it's in your drop. You get out from your drop so it's there and your battle area ready for your the sea battle card. And then we have an activate main limit one for one red. If your leader is a red universe free card and there are one or more Quetzalcai, Panchia and Bolorata cards all red in your energy, Z energy, battle area and or drop. Or and drop. And your opponent has two or more energy. You get to play this card from your hand. Place up to one red universe free card where energy goes to three or less from your drop on the this card. So that's quite cool. You get to play it out for cheap if you don't play it off the Quetzalcai, it's not too bad. 
And then you've got Analyzer. So this is your big boss. Like battle card in the deck. 8 cost. With 25k power. Triple tech as well. And it's got an e AX Evolve, which is limit 1. For free red energy, which is quite costly. If your leader is a red, even though it's a free card, and your opponent has three or more energy, red coit, uh, coitia writer with original power or 50 power or more. So it's got to be, uh, got to be the original power, so it can't get uh, the boost from the little one drops to go underneath it. But then so far, the two cards we've seen for it can both work for this. And then we've got a permanent water red coitia is a card, is under this card, and it's got a, this card can attack battle cards in active mode. It's quite cool, you can try and clear your opponent's board, which is quite nice. So you can get free attacks at your opponent's board, or free attacks at your opponent's life. And then the auto's limit 1. If your leader is a red universe free card, and your opponent has 4 more life, when this card attacks an opponent's battle card, deal 1 damage to your opponent. So, it's weird that it's a little bit 1, given the restriction. Like, if it was no... If it didn't require a certain life to trigger, I would understand be a limit 1. But, when it's got restriction at 4 more life, like, I don't see the point of it being limit 1, that seems a bit... It doesn't seem great to me, it just seems... Yeah, it seems just a bad version of Rolo. And I'll keep saying that because I love Rolo. So it might be a little bit biased. And then we have Pepperoni, the Brains of Universe 3, with the Flect. Auto, when this card is played from your hand, draw one card. So there's never counter up in the deck, and it has the Flect, so it's not stopped from being committed to play. And then, activate main, limit 1 for 1 red. If your leader is a red universe free card, you have four more energy and you choose one red coitator card in your battle area and place it underneath this card. Draw one card and play up to one red analyzer card from your hand on top of this card in active mode. So that's pretty cool. That is really, really cool because then you can yeah play out the eight drop analyzer a little bit cheap cheaper because you can pay the one for a coitator to bring out the pepperoni and then use the effect of pepperoni to then play the analyzer just to do it for two energy rather than the AX world for free which is quite nice because there's not much benefit of using the AX evolve because you don't draw from it and it's quite costly compared to you got the cheaper way so that makes it feel a little bit better but still compared to whatever red decks do it is not amazing it's not they've got, they've got the flexion for protection but if nothing has barrier to kind of like stay on board and have a little bit of um safety but I think that is all for Universe 3. Uh, no, that's not. There are a few more Universe 3 cards. So we've got a skillless Universe 3 being VR, being 3 cost 30k, and a Super Combo, the Red Super Combo being for Universe 3 as well, being Nariyama, te uh, Mechanical te Tactician. It's so just a generic Super Combo. When you like, If you like Leader's Red, you like to 4 less. Using the combo, draw 1. Not too bad. And being Universe 3 can mean a benefit of drawing in this deck by such ability and things like that. But that is it for the Universe 3, I think that is definitely is it now. And we got the Universe 7 stuff, which is where we got like a new Invoker deck, but none of it really works properly with the old Invoker. Because I don't know, I think even they, I think they even said, or Flashbinder said in his little um, talk with deck, on the Deck Planet video, about how the the, the Android 17 were meant to have, they had a TV promo was meant to be for the new red deck. Um, but it was... It wasn't like um, worded properly to be with mono red lead or anything like that, so it was very good for the um, the old but, um, vocal lead, especially at one cost to keep your leader in vocal. Was really good for that deck, and that would explain and that would explain why they were saying about you know, like vocal support in set nineteen, but we didn't get in set nineteen. We got a set after, so it could be these sets were switched around. Kind of um, seen a little bit, a little bit of confusion, or because of maybe because of battle hour, there are some things going on to they had to switch the sets. But I explain why we they said they're gonna get some invoker support in set 19, but then we didn't get in set 19, but we got in set 20. So it's um you know Android 17. So you Android 17 and oh yeah, I forgot they got the um the little thing of they printed the same front side on the uh, first time they showed the leader. Um for some reason. They on the first time they showed the leader Android 17 of both sides, they had the first front side printed on the same on the back side. So, um, better switch that over because, yeah, they did end up correcting it. So, it's not Android 17 flipping over to Android 17. It's Android 17 flipping over to Wars of Universe 7 United as 1. So, it would be, as I said, it would be really cool if we got these United as 1 leads for all the universes that participated in the Universe Survival Arc. And, oh, the Tour of Power. And also, you got the Deadly Cash extra card that goes with the lead, as we'll see on the front side, on the Awakened side. 
So, on both sides they got War of Universe 7, which is a keyword that makes it so any War of Uni uh, Universe 7 card with, well, battle card with the end of this Universe 7 special trait doesn't have any specified cost, so it's removed, which is quite nice. And it's got two ults on the front side. When this card attacks, draw one card. Standard. And then the other auto is when you add a red-blue multicolored card to your energy, switch it to one of your energy to active mode and negate the skill for the game. So it's a quite nice way for just a one-time use to get a um, free charge of a multicolor without having it be um, essentially yeah, be coming in rest mode, which gives a kind of way that they can use Taunt of Power Arena in this deck, which is quite nice. So it gives it a bit of flexibility with using some old support. And then you've got the Awaken when your life's at 4 or less, or you have a Universe 7 Z battle card with energy cost of 2 or more in play as the requirement. You then draw 1, untap 1, flip your life, take your life down to 6 if you're higher than 6, and then flip your leader over. And now you have 2 autos now, and you no longer have the just easy way to just swing the leader draw a card. Now there's a different way you draw a card, which is auto once per turn, because they're both once per turn. When you play attack with or activate the blocker, of a Universe 7 Z battle card, draw one card. So to get the draw on the awakened side, you have to use your Z battle cards to do that. So either by playing them, attacking with them, or activating the blocker skill on them to get the draw. So you have to do some other things to be able to draw, which means you don't have to worry about having to swing with your leader to draw, which is quite nice. There's one little benefit out of that. And then the also, ever also is one to turn discard one deadly cash from your hand. When you use a rival to play a red blue multicolor battle card, Choose one of your Universe 7 cards with a rival and it gains barrier for the turn. So that's a nice way to discard this extra card to basically give any rival, a card you rival in. That's red, blue, and barrier for the turn to give that protection. And this is where the evoke is going to come, stuff's going to come from, from these multicolored cards. And then Dadly Clash itself is a 4 cost extra card with an auto and an activate battle. So the auto is limit 1. If your leader is a red, War of Universe 7 card, so it's is, so what it says with the red warrior of universe 7 card is looking for the character not the um keyword skill or anything like that it's looking for the actual name of the the actual character on the card which is warrior of universe 7 in this case so this only works with this leader so far and you said one universe 7 card with this and this card from your drop to your warp so warp a u7 card and this card from your drop as well when one of your universe 7 cards would be removed from your battle area by the opponent's skill or killed draw one card so if you put a root like for your Valor, from your Valor as a Universe 7 card, you get to, yeah, draw one by removing this or something else. And it's nice that it removes itself because then you've got Rival Seeker, be able to grab this back to keep getting it for your lead to discard to give any Rival's barrier, which is quite nice. And then the Active Battles Limit 1. If your leader is a Mono Red Universe 7 card, choose up to one of your Red Universe 7 Android 17 Battle Cards, switch it to Active Mode, and it gets 10k power for the turn, and at the end of the turn, switch up to one of your Energy to Active Mode. So that's quite nice. You will see you some one of the um, Android 17 Battle Cards, which is pretty decent. And this is a nice way, because I think it does gain Invoker, to be able to get some more attacks after using this as well. Even as once per turn, it's still quite cool. So that's the first part of it. Then we have the Z battle card. So this side of the red gets the more the Z battle cards in just a Goku, a Gohan, and Android 17. So we've got SSG Sun Goku, Rapid Fire Response, Sun Gohan, Darren Onslaught, and Android 17 Impeccable Defense. So all different costs. So we got Goku and Gohan, both two costs with 15k power and require one Z energy. And Android 17 is a free cost 25k that requires freezing energy, but it has barrier and blocker, whereas Gohan has deflect. But also, both Goku and Gohan have Z-Stack 2, which require you to put, which allow you to put up to two red Universe 7 battle cards underneath it when you play it. And you might be wondering, why do you put that? Well, we'll go over the skills to explain why. you got Goku with two autos, first one being if you have four more energy. When this card is played from under a card by a skill, this card gets 10k power and dual attack for the turn. So basically making it, once you get four energy, a 25k dual attacker, which is quite nice. And then the auto, the other auto, is if your leader is a red Warriors Universe 7 card, at the start of your opponent's main phase, play up to one red Universe 7 card with entry cost of two or less from under this card and place this card under the played card. So essentially switching it out, which is quite cool. So you essentially, at the start of your opponent's main phase, you'd play out the Gohan from underneath the Goku and put the Goku under the Gohan. And this would also trigger your weight, your draw, pa uh, draw effect on your le Awakened leader. 
in your opponent's turn so you can get a draw during your opponent's turn as well so you can get quite a bit of draw if this gets uh, if this stays and doesn't get destroyed which might be harder to do than we might expect and then Gohan the only other skill he's got outside of the Z sack and the Flect is an auto which requires one red if your leader is a red universe a wires of universe 7 card and your opponent has two or more energy at the start of your opponent's main phase, play up to one red Universe 7 card with energy cost of 3 or less from under this card and place this card under the played card. So that's quite cool because you get to you can either go for Goku or Gohan. Because remember if you when you get to turn two, you can and you got a Z, Z energy uh, Z battle card which costs two or more in play, you can then trigger the weight effect uh, weight awaken from your leader. So giving you the extra en the energy you need for this skill, and your opponent will charge into their turn two if they if they went second or turn three if they went or third energy if they went um first and then you'll get you play out this central 17 out from underneath it which is quite nice so that's how you kind of like you cheat them out a little bit and kind of keep flipping through them and you got Andrew 17 peckle defense barrier blocker also when this card is played it can't be KO'd in battle for the turn so it means you could block with it and not worry about your opponent running over it and then you got two activate skills first one be activate main which is limit one for two energy one being red if your leader is a red, war is a unit of 7 card and you switch this card to rest mode, play up to one red unit of 7 card with energy cost of 3 or less from under this card, and at the end of your opponent's next turn, remove this card from the game. So, you get to have this about, you get the pay 2 energy, to play out a card from underneath it, so either a Gohan or whatever card you have underneath, or a Goku, whatever one, and then at the end of your opponent's next turn, remove this card from the game, which hopefully you at least get the use of blocking with it first. And it's a very good blocker because you've got anti battle, limit one. If it's your opponent's turn, switch this card to active mode, meaning you can get two blocks out of it, which is quite cool, or an attack with it, and then restand it. So yeah, because then you can get, yeah, you can get the activate main arrest itself, and then in your opponent's turn, activate battle, so you can then block uh, attack after you activate it. So this is the battle cards. Then we got some of the red cards, so this card goes into two colours, because we did look at it before, and we saw that there were some cards in blue, black, and some multicolours that were missing after last week. And, what well, especially after seeing all red cards, and we can see, and we've seen that some of the cards for this deck, because it's a multicolour deck, going like for Invoker, it goes into red and blue. So we've got some of the red battle cards for it. We get an Android 18, Selfless Savior, Freezer, Pride of an Emperor, and then a Skillless SSG Sun Goku, be it a 2 cost 20k Skillless. So the Android 18 is a really nice one, and it's got a permanent where if your leader is a Warriors of Universe 7 card, and there are no copies of this card in your drop, when one of your red Android 17 cards would be removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, you may discard this card from your hand instead. So discard this card from your hand instead of your Android 17 card being destroyed or removed from the board. Is really really nice and if you remember it you it needs you to have no copies of this card in your drop but if you have you still have deadly clash then the trigger so you can use this and then deadly clash because it was tried to be destroyed remove this android 18 and deadly clash from your drop to your warp to get yourself a draw as well to kind of replace the card you discarded in this android 18. so it's a really nice card for the deck and it's also got a nice little auto when this card is played look up to five cards from top of your deck and up to one red universe seven card and she goes to six or less from the, among them to your hand and shuffle your deck because it's a searcher if you want it to be then we got freezer pride of an emperor double strike 20k free cost as well while you have three more energy you reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one making it two cost and the, also the all two autos both limit one so the first one being if your leader is a universe seven card when this card is played draw one card then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and he gets 25k minus 25k power for the turn so a nice little draw one minus which is really nice so i even put this in the cube it's, it does seem pretty good and then you got the the other auto if your leader is a red or is a universe seven card and you place this card from your combo area and it's in this drop when you activate a red blue multicolor card extra card draw one so you kind of got these nice nice little benefits for you play these out and do stuff with them then you get to get these added effects and it's quite interesting but i have not put it together or even tried to work it out to understand how strong these cards are but they do seem quite interesting then we got some of them going into blue as well so we got some blue cards that um help out with the android 7 the uh, universe 7 arch type so android 17 calm judgment ssb Son goku beyond full power and ssb vegeta beyond full power so android 17 is He's also a never searcher. He's an auto. When this card is played, look at the top five cards of your deck. 
and then add up to one red blue multicolored card for the entry cost of six or less among them to your hand and shuffle your deck so kind of similar to what android 17 anything does and a never auto being limit one if your leader is a model red universe why is the universe seven card a red universe seven card is in your combo area and you discard one red blue multicolored card from your hand when this card is used in the combo draw one so it seems like very tedious way to do you have to have a certain leader you have to have a red universe seven card in your combo and you also discard a red blue multicolored extra card from your hand um all that just to draw one when you combo with this card so pretty odd but it could be quite decent like where i've seen some cards that actually do make use of this and it seems to be an interesting deck but kind of looking complicated when it comes to it and then we have ssb sun goku beyond full power so use a counter attack you get the attack and play this card and then also a permanent where during your opponent's turn if a red blue multicolored card is in your energy reduce the energy card of this card, energy cost of this card in your hand by two so you can get a nice little negate out of this and it's reduced no matter what for your opponent's turn so that's the generic part of it it's also a free cost of 10k but you also have the auto which only works with your this specific leader because it's limit one if your leader is a if your leader's backside is a red warriors of universe 7 card and you have free for your energy when this card is played for the turn, when your opponent would use a non-awakened skill to switch one of their act energy to active mode, they can't switch it to active mode unless they place one of their energy in its owner's drop. So this kind of only works against some certain blue leads to, because this is kind of like not a strong outside of blue leaders because Bean got the errata to be in the opponent's turn. So it's not the greatest, but it does does help this deck against things like Crimson or a Soul Strike or any deck that wants to untap outside of their Awakened skill. During, well, during your, during your turn at least. Then you've got SSB Vegeta Beyond Awful Power. Unique dual attack. This is a free cost 20k. It's also got permanent where while your leader is a Universe 7 card and you have free and more energy. Reduce the energy's card, energy cost of this card in your hand by one. Similar to Freezer. And he's got two autos from Freeze as well. So first one is limit one. If your leader is a red, why is a Universe 7 card? And you place this card from your combo area and it's in its drop. When you use a rival to play a multicolored uh, blue, red blue multicolored battle card, draw one. So you can cut this kind of seems the same as um there's a paragus back in the um expansion which you could send it from your combo to your drop to draw one. So there's a way to kind of arrival and then get the card back to make use of it if you just wanted to use a way to arrival but not lose cards from your hand. And this card is the same thing but specifically for this leader. So it's quite cool. And then you got auto once per turn. When this card attacks, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and place it at the bottom of his owner's deck. So that's pretty cool. And like this one does really seem like a good one to put in cube. Because even then free free energy, 20k, that's pretty decent. Just choosing any of your opponent's um battle cards, but I'm bottom decking it. It's quite nice. So those are the blue ones. Then we also got the multicolored cards, the multicolored battle cards for the Universe 7 deck. So we will start off with the Gohan first. So Gohan is a four cost, strength of a strength of conviction, 15k four cost, and it is also arrival red blue for one red. Also, if your lead, if your opponent has three more energy and it's your opponent's turn, when this card is played against Invoker for the turn. It's a nice way to have Invoker in this, which is quite cool. You see both of these cards gain Invoker, and Gohan is only for the turn. You can activate battle limit one if your leader is a red warriors of universe seven card and it's your opponent's turn. Switch up to one of your red blue multicolor energy to active mode and you can't play battle cards from your hand until the end of your next turn. So do note it says from your hand from your hand, not anywhere, just for the turn. It's just from hand specifically. So you can still use the battle cards as well to play in your next turn, because it's until the end of your next turn. Because you may only be uh, arrival this out in your opponent's turn because it, it specifically says it is it's your opponent's turn. So that's quite a nice effect. It's like it doesn't really restrict you out because you'll be in a rivaling in the opponent's turn by the looks of it, and it plays the battle cards in your turn, which is quite cool. And you got Android 7 Android 17 and move that to the tide, so never turn into tide 17. <laughs> and it's a six cost, 25k with double strike, a rival bl red blue for one red and one blue. And a nice little permanent where if your leader is a red, warriors of unit seven card, this card gains a poker. So this card specifically gains a poker for the stack, no matter what, what's in board and 
He's got a really nice auto. When this card is played, look up the five cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one red, blue, multicolored card with entry cost of six or less among them to your hand and shuffle your deck. And then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with entry cost of four or less and KO it. So you're going to pop something and also search as well. And remember, this card gets protection to Android, uh, Android 18 and stuff. So this, this card is quite cool. And you can give it barrier as well for the turn, thanks to your lead. And then you've got activate battle, limit one, discard one card from your hand, use up to two red and or blue uh, cards, both with 5k combo power and unit with seven from your drop in a combo with the skills and get for the turn. So you get to add an extra 10k combo when it swings, which is quite nice during either player's turn as well. That's pretty cool, because you're going to be using, probably using two cards to the rival in, which is quite nice. So there's the battle cards, moving on to the extra cards. So, well, the ever multicolored cards, we've got these two. So starting off with the first one, we got S's Vegeta Immediate Response. This is the multicolor Z Battle card in the set for Universe 7. It's a 2 cost 16k, free energy with war. Free Z cost. So it's another one you can bring out under well for the leader and also from under the Gohan and Goku. So it's got a nice little auto, a little bit one. When you use a rival to play a red blue multicolor battle card, draw one. So it gives you a bit more draw power in that aspect as well. And it's also got active main limit one. If your leader is a red Wars of Universe 7 card and you have three or more energy, play up to one red Universe 7 card with energy cost of three or less from this card and remove this card from the game. One thing is though, is it doesn't have barrier to kind of like number protection, but then neither of them, none of them do. So they're kind of susceptible to being popped, especially being two cost. Quite a few decks have ways to just rid themselves of two cost. And given that red and I think red and blue are like the more prominent colours in the format at the moment. They have very easy ways to get rid of it, and even green pro pro uh, propping up and black with just removal built into most of their effects can be very easy to remove some easy battle cards. And then we got Universe 7's powers combined. This is the ever extra card for this deck, so they're gonna need not many new extra cards for the archetype for the Evoker, but it is a four cost energy exhaust auto limit one. If your leader is a red, warriors of Universe 7, and you place one Universe 7 card from your energy in the owner's drop at the end of your turn. Add this card from your drop to your energy with energy source negated. So just at the end of the turn, if you in your drop, you can just sack up an energy to place in. So you've got that multicolor extra card, uh, multicolor um, uh, energy at the end of the turn, just, just keep keep alive. That's quite cool. And then activate main slash battle. Choose one of your cards, it gets 5k power for the turn. Then you get to choose up to one of your opponent's non leader cards, it gets minus 3k power for the turn. So that allows you to hit unisons or battle cards, which is quite cool. I don't, can't remember what um, Emperor's Death Beam hit. I know it wasn't leaders. It might, I don't know if it was just battle cards. But at least this one, this doesn't go for barrier like um, Emperor's Death Beam, but allows you to hit unisons as well, which might be a little benefit for, uh, aside from that. And then we got some of the other cards. So now we got some of the legacy support. So that was all the Universe 7, Universe 3. The ever remaining cards that we were wondering what are these ever cards that are revealed in these colors? They are legacy support for everyone's, for ever decks, and something we normally see in TPs really. So, starting off with the first one, SSB Vegeta, Blistering Barrage. This is legacy support for the blue Gogeta BR leader. So it's an 8 cost, 35k with dual attack. Also EX Evolve for 1 red. Blue Gogeta BR card with energy cost of 6. So there's that. the only one that's really attacked for this is the multicolor one that we got. I think there might be two. I think there might be two of them. I can't remember if the other one's a 5 cost, but I think there might be one or two targets. But there is a type for it, and it's a multicolor one. And it's got a nice little auto if it's your leader is a blue Gogeta BR card. When it's got attacks, add a top card of your deck to your energy in rest mode. So a little bit ramping with that. Because you want to again get to your 10 drop, which is cool. Which this is also a, I think a card you can use for the 10 drop as well. And then you got activate battle for 2 blue. If your leader is a blue Gogeta BR card. And this card this card gets my, plus 10k power and jump strike for the battle. So it's got cool you can do it on 2 uh, swings. Because it's got dual attack and it's not it's just for the battle. And not once per turn. So you can get some triple, um, 45k triple strike swings in for, well, at least one for free energy and then a second one for an extra two. Not too bad, but not great as well for the deck. It's not, the, it's not something the deck needed to kind of keep up with the meta, so I'm not sure how I was going to go with that. And the next two, freeze common enemy and sell common enemy, are support for the token um, Android 21 and Android 18 uh, cut leaders from set 8. So support for the old stuff rather than the new stuff. You know, you can still play some of these cards with more of the new stuff because some of the Android 21 cards actually do give you tokens for the new ones. And you've got Freezer being a 6 cost, Cell being a five, 4 cost with Freezer 25 and Cell 15. 
So freeze as unique and double strike, and activate main, limit one. For one blue, if you have three or more energy and you choose three of your opponent's claim tokens and remove from the game, play this card from your hand, so you're allowing you to play, yourself, play out yourself, for yourself. A 25k double strike for one energy, and really you put some of the tokens for turn three. Not too bad. Not amazing, but still it's quite, it's not too bad. Then sell being a blocker, with an activate main limit one, choose three of your opponent's clone tokens, remove from the game, and play this card from your hand. So this could be a useful one to get some of the tokens off your opponent's board because you know, there's no longer the 18 mil, so you don't need to worry about having tokens on your board, you normally want to get rid of them, so your opponent just keep, doesn't keep swinging with them, and then comboing to put them through is actually lethal, like potential damaging swings. And this allows you to get rid of them, give you a blocker, and even trigger the fill card as well for some of the old stuff. Then we have the two black cards we were missing, so they were legacy support as well, being then they Prunga the third wish for the set six blue Goku deck, and then Great Priest Declaration of Annihilation for the Grand Priest deck in set 16, or Great Priest. So the Dende and Paronga is a 2 cost 15k with permanent this card can attack. And activate main if your leader is a Son Goku energy restored and you switch this card to rest mode. Draw one card, use it to one of your Son Goku Fierce Spirit Forger. Look up the three cards at the top of your deck and place them under the chosen cards. And so that's not too bad because if you don't remember what the Son Goku Spirit Forger does, it's it was a 2 cost. That uh, only a 5k power barrier and has a permanent where for every card underneath it, it gains 5k power. So that's just doing either player's turn, just get getting up and up and up. And activate main, which allows you to put a card from underneath it from the top of your deck. And if it had seven or more, it gained had gained triple strike for the turn. And the only problem was in that also, also in that permanent was it stopped you from playing any battle cards that aren't blue. So if you want to play, so looking at this, you have to play this first, and then bring out a Spirit Forger, which luckily you can do from one of the Desire cards in that same set for one energy to bring it out, and then use the effect. And you could potentially ramp up the seven and single turn for that if you have the right combination of cards to give yourself a cheap triple striker that doesn't cost you too much, just requires a lot of setup. So it's not gr it's not great legacy port for it, but it's legacy port for it. They're just not a good one. And then you've got Great Priest, Declaration of Annihilation, 8 cost 30k, a nice little permanent where while there are 4 or more colours in your energy, this card is also treated as red, blue, green and yellow, so you can mean up multi colour as well, you can mean black, uh, black colours as well for the Great Priest deck. And it also has uh, auto, where when this card is played, it gains the following skill for the turn, which is activate 1, limit 1 for 1 energy. Activate the activate main skill of up to one eraser universe in your hand. And if you remember what I see some people asking about this, this acts, it acts just like you would with desires, where it says activate the activate main skill, that means actually use it from your hand using the activate main skill on the card. So you would activate this activate main skill on the card and then discard the card to the drop, send the card to the drop afterwards. So you don't get to just reveal it and use it, you actually have to use it up. And it's got an activate main, limit one, where for one red one blue one yellow and one green if your leader is a red great priest card play this card from your hand and then choose all your opponent's battle cards center and warps now this doesn't go for barrier that would have been wouldn't have been too bad for the great priest deck be able to go for barrier but still a board wipe and playing out this 30k beat stick that then allows you to burn life five energy five energy to burn potentially two card well two cards really that's it it is not amazing since we've got ever cards to do the same thing without all this setup, but it's a, not, not, not a bad card for the Great Priest deck, and nice little legacy port there. Then we have the last two of the multicolor cards from that we were missing. So we had like some multicolors in between the two colors we got, which is red, blue, and um, and the blue, green. And we have a Nappa full scale attack and SS2 careful at warming up. So we got Nappa being a five cost 20k double strike, rival red, green. So a little bit like the Gogeta one we've already got. But it's got a different kind of auto where if it's your turn, when this card is played, choose up to three of your opponent's earthlings and on a mechanic cards, KO them, and for each card KO'd by the skill, this card gains 5k power for the turn. So depending, like, this is not, I don't think this is gr as great as the Go Cheetah one, because it just hits something 20k or less, if I remember correctly, when it's played, and has the same kind of skills. And as well as that, I can't remember if it needed a green or red, I think it did need a red as well. Same cost and everything, but it just got a different effect. And if Earthling and the Mechian cards become a more of a mainstay in the meta, then this might be a little bit better. More, a little bit better. But it also is only during your turn, so where Gogeta could be used defensively to pop that rival in and pop something. So Nappa doesn't seem that great. Then we got S2 Kefla warming up. This is for the support, legacy support for the Surge Kefla leader. 
the one surge leader that was terrible there i don't think he's ever sort of see play but barely see play and it's two cost 15k with unique and barrier and also what it's going to play choose one draw one or choose up to one opponent's battle card so it's rest modes it can be mainly as cantrip and it's got a nice little attribute main where i pay him one blue one yellow and one of any other energy so three energy total at least one blue one yellow if your leader is a careful surge of ferocity so that's the z leader the surge leader sorry and you place two cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck play up to one meteoric energy careful from your hand on top of this card so you gotta use three cards you gotta take out three cards from your hand just to pay free energy to play what i can't remember like i can't remember which meteoric energy careful it was i know it's it's one of the big ones but i can't remember if it's the one from the set the old set if it's one from the old set that's not too bad but if it's not if it's the other one that came with the like um promos and stuff that's terrible so this one like from the meteoric energy name i think that might be the good one from the set if it is that's pretty decent if it's not that is a pretty terrible card and that is it for the multicolors and set and we go on to the last uh secret rare so we got the last secret rare show and we got all three of them now and that's Android 21 trans uh transcendental predator so it's a four cost 40k with ultimate energy exhaust to collect dual attack and blocker so a lot of keyword skills Two big permanents as well. The first one being increase the energy cost of this card in your hand uh, by four in any area other than your owner's in its owner's hand and battle area. And because of this, it cannot be played in Janemba. I know a lot of people will look at it to be played in Janemba, but it cannot because this is a deck. It's also counts towards like with um, Freezer Prison and Janemba. It's a deck building requirement, so when it do the deck building checks, it's those kind of permanents that check at a time. So it counts at eight costs when deck building for Janemba, which so you can't use it. And it's also got a nice little permanent where when this card would be removed from your opponent from your battle area by the opponent's skill. If one or more cards are underneath this card, you may place all cards from under this card in the owner's drop area instead. Kind of a little, little bit of protection, which is quite cool, so it can stay around. And then you you also, if your leader is blue or green, when this card is played, choose all your opponent's battle cards and unisons, ignoring barrier, place them under this card, and for every two cards chosen, you may add the top card of your deck to your life. And that's got a maximum of up to two. So essentially, you can play it down, wipe out your entire opponent's entire board, just like you see the red Vegeta, um, Vegeta Secret Rado. But instead of sacking them off to the drop, you get and losing the card itself, you get to basically just take your opponent's entire board, unison and all, or battle cards in unison, shove it under this card so they don't have them to block or be useful for them, and potentially recover up to two more life, so you can even go up past eight life threshold, which so far only life of the freezer did, and as well just have a dual attacky 40k attacker or even a blocker as well and it's got a one-time protection with its permanent too so that is a fantastic secret rare that would be probably a, quite a sort after one because i know a lot of people did request this one like people were asking like when are we going to get us um and just like when we're so absorbed we finally have it and it is very very strong so let's have a look at some of the other cards as well so we'll start off with some of the tps we got revealed today for the next lot of spoilers and so far we've got we got four we only got eight shown today being the four red four of the red ones and four blue ones so we got these first three being ss and gohan defeating a demon freezer overwhelming omnipotence and then magikeo Mag magikeo be it body, body manipulation so support for units was free universe seven and just generic red support so for the gohan it's a very nice one generic red support being a four cost 20k with unique double strike blocker Counter play skill if your leader is red, play this card. So just play this down if your leader is red. That's all it does with a counter play. And it's got two permanents. The first one, I've seen it confuse people, which for each Z energy in the cost of Z cards in your leader area and battle area, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. That basically means if you've got a Z battle card or a Z leader in play and your leader is red, you reduce the cost of. Well, if you've got a Z, Z energy and a Z leader in play, or if you've got a Z battle card and a Z leader in play, the cost, the Z costs on those cards count towards the, um, yeah, you basically get to reduce the cost of this card by the Z costs in there, which is quite nice. So for each Z cost of a Z, in the Z energy of a Z leader or a Z, or a Z battle card in, in those areas, you can reduce this by one for each one. So if you've got a free cost Z battle card, uh, Z battle card in play that has a free free Z energy cost that reduces this by three. Simple as. Then you got the ever permanent, which is for each card in your Z energy, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one, as similar to the Goku Black in blue. 
uh, which is quite cool. So you've got multiple ways to kind of reduce it, easier ways like for certain decks. And it's got a nice little auto when this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, and it gets minus 20k power for the turn. It's a shame it wasn't units as well, but still, 20, minus 20k for a one cost counter play is still pretty decent, and giving you a double strike or block, uh, double strike blocker as well. That's a very nice promo, and I do hope it gets a winner one, because that would be, look pretty nice in the winner probably. Then we got Freezer Overwhelming Omnipotence. It's a free cost 15k with a permanent. If your leader is a Universe 7 card and you have a Universe 7 Z battle card to play, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by 2. So, quite easy to do in the Warriors Universe 7 deck. And you've got an auto limit 1 when this card is played. Draw 1 card and choose up to 1 opponent's battle card, since it's, and it gets minus 15k power for the turn. So, that really goes in with any of the Z uh, Universe 7 decks because. So you've got one specified cost, it doesn't need any specific kind of cost, and you just need a Universe 7 Z battle card. And I think there's a, enough about, and some of the Z decks, and this is quite a decent one. Drawing and minus something by 15k for a one cost 15k is pretty decent. And then we got Ma uh, Machi, Machi KO, Body Manipulation. It's got a permanent, this card can be KO'd in battle against battle cards with energy cost of 3 or less. So it's got a little protection from battle against those. But then most of the time, things are more than their energy cost and play out cheaper earlier that this might not be as effective as it might want but then you've got two activate skills activate main for a one red if your leader is a red universe free card and your opponent has two or more energy play this card from your hand zip wise i'm not sure how this fits in with the universe free stuff how it could be useful but then you've got activate battle limit one for one red this card gets 10k power for the battle and during the next turn this card gets minus 10k power so that seems a little bit like the Kaioken Goku for red, but is not got anything relevant. It's just got a not great permanent. And then like the Kaioken, which has critical, the force out cards from hand or force out on the gate, or opponent to combo out the swing in the hopes of not taking the crit damage. And also the having a effect that when played makes your opponent discard one. This is not as great as that. It's like kind of trying to be similar, but not at all any good really. And that is it for the first three cards. Then we got the next three. So the ever red card we got is a Sin Shenron Negative Energy Amnus. Animus, I think. And that's a support for the red uh, Sin deck, which is surprising considering how young that deck is and how good it still already is. And then you've got two blue cards being Maron Precious Family for the Android 18 deck. And then Goku, Son Goku and Oob Newfound Journey for the World Tournament stuff. So the Sin Shenron is a 4 cost 19k with blocker. First also, choose one of your ever red Sin, uh, Shadow Dragon cards to KO it, like we've seen with the ever Sin Shenron in the deck. When this card attacks or activates blocker, choose it to one battle card or unison and it gets minus 15k power for the turn. So you've got a little bit of defense on this, so you can play more of a control red deck in the Sin deck. Also, also the ever also is at the end of your turn, which is kind of active mode, so you can swing with it and then restart it to have it as a blocker. Pretty nice. And then the way you play it for cheap, because you didn't pay anything for the actual cost in that deck. And that is activate main limit 1 for 1 red. If your leader is a red Shadow Dragon card, and either your leader is a Z your leader is a Z leader, or you have 6 or more Z energy, one of those two costs, with, along with having a red Shadow Dragon leader. Um, add, one, add up to 1 card from your life to your hand, so you've got a way to take life if you want to. And play this card from your, tr from your hand. So that's not too bad. It's pretty nice. That could be... There's not really a placement for it in Atron, but it does bring back up the Shadow Dragon count back up. Um if because my see so I remember some people were adding Ice Shenron, Ice Shenron's terrible, is not great. And this could be this is a lot better to use in Ice Shenron. And then we got Maron Prestige Family. It's a one cost one K, unique, permanent, while your leader if while your leader is a blue Android 18 card, your Krillin and Android 18 cards game blocker. So nice thing to add, just blocker, not sure how relevant it's gonna be. Probably would have been better to have barrier but Still, it is what it is. Then you've got to activate main well, to activate skills in it. First one being activate main limit one. If you have a Krillin card and Android 18 card in play, play this card from your hand. So if you've got both of them, you get to play out the, the daughter for the two. Free hand for free. It'd be nice if it was like a cantrip as well, so you can actually replace it in hand. That would have been decent. But hey ho. And then you activate battle once per turn. If it's your turn, choose up to one of your Krillin and or or Android 18 cards, both blue, and it gets it gets 5k power for the battle. So you got is a way to just give 5k power for battle for an Android 18 card, and also that's just Android 18 card, Android 18 or Krillin card. So that could be leader or anything or um battle cards as well. So you can give your leader a 5k power boost for the battle as well. 
See, I probably would have been better to have a unique rather than a barrier, or a barrier with unique, just to make sure that when it comes down it's kind of unprotected, because they're not normally quite susceptible little cards like this. Quite easy to be removed most of the time. Then we got Sun Goku and Oob, Newfound Journey. 4 cost 15k with Deflect and Dual Attack. Nice to alter when this card is played. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, and she costs a 5 or less. Return it to his own hand. Then look up to 5 cards from the top of your deck, add it to one Earthling or World Tournament card. Both with an entry cost of 4 or less, summon into your hand and shuffle your deck. And that's not too bad, it's quite a nice effect. And also activate main, limit 1 for 1. If your lead is a blue or water tournament card, and you have 3 or more energy, play this card from your hand. And this is nice because you can play with any world tournament leader or blue leader. And remember as well, uh, the Turtle School deck also is a world tournament leader when it's awakened. So when they're, when, they're, when the Roshi leader awakens, it's then world tournament. So you can play it with that as well, and it has cards that's grab off those as well because most of most of them are earthlings outside of goku so that's not too bad and i think some of them do have the world tournament tag as well like the um fade rivals as well but you can't search for them off that but those are the those are the next three of the tps and we have the last two we got built today being a zamasu wishing for extinction and android 21 trading places so the zamasu here is a support a legacy card for the set 10 Zamasu, because if you look at the auto, it's if your leader is a blue Zamasu card, when this card is placed from your energy in a drop by your leader's skill, draw one card. So that means when you sack off the energy, if you sack off this card in your energy for your leader's effect, you gain either a dual attack or a bottom deck card, you get to draw one. Doesn't too bad. So you're losing your energy, but you're also getting the card back in hand. Then you got activate main limit one. If your leader is a blue Zamasu card, add this card from your hand to your energy. So that's how you like kind of ramp it to help go with the with the whole um, ramp to get to awaken as quick as possible and then play things more expensive, quicker, cheaper. Add this card from your hand to your energy and for the turn you can't add cards to your energy. You can only play mono blue Zamasu or Goku or mono blue Goku black cards and at the end of the turn place this card from your energy to the zone drop. So this is nice, it only locks you out of playing anything that isn't mono blue Zamasu or Goku black for the turn and also stops you from like most of the ramp ramp cards that are heavily restricted unlike some of the more generic stuff which sees a lot of play you can't ramp anymore so like for unless you're like a a saiyan like goku or vegeta there's no restriction on your ramp whereas for anything else that's not those they kind of like say yeah let's put restriction on the the kind of ramp cards that are for specific leaders and things like that because ss4 vegeta is fair enough and also you won't get the draw from the activate main we're sent to drop, you have to get from the leader for the auto as well. Then we got Android 21 trading places. This seems like legacy port for the 8 Android 21 because it's a one drop with barrier and two autos. Limit one, place one, place one of your energy in the zone's drop and return one of your multi card energy to its own hand. When this card is using a combo, add one card from your hand to your energy in rest mode. So if you got, I can't I don't know if that's relevant. Um, unless you want to switch out your energy, that could be work, but outside of that, it's I'm not sure how great that is. And then the other auto at the end of your turns, which plays up to one of your energy in his own drop, and that allows you to trigger the leader's effect for one of the Andro 21s that needs to sack off an energy to replace it and draw or something like that. I think it was, might have been the starter deck one for that one. But that's the legacy port in the TP. We'll probably get the rest of the TPs tomorrow and then the winner ones and then hopefully some of the SPRs, because we do have some SPRs shown on the Bandai TCG app, but I like to wait until it's been officially revealed on the um, Facebook, because that seems like they did a blunder putting it up on TC Player already, and it's only half of them, so I have to wait until we get the proper reveal on Facebook instead to put them on this. But that is it for the, all the reveals and stuff, and now we go into the 2023 season of um, the regionals, and we've got some interesting stuff. So these are the prizes we get. So for participation, you get a storage box, the storage boxes are back. You get one of those, you get five, di five champion selection pack 2023 volume one. We'll see what that is in a bit. We get free event pack 11, so we get free the new event pack. You get a championship selection pack volume one, which is the offline exclusive edition, uh, which is only for this is only extra prizing if you going to offline events, so one that's not online. And you get one. There's one exclusive edition for English speaking and one exclusive edition for French speaking. And then. Top 16, you get a, you get four more of the, well, top fit, top 64, you get two more of the championship select, championship selection packs, and then top 16, you get four more championship selection packs, two more event packs, and you get one lot of, one pack of a alt art set 2023 volume one, so like the winner promos for the set, 
and in top eight you get a exclusive well you get the um SSB Kaioken secret rare old art with a serial number or your pain exclusive art depending what region you're in then top four you get a booster box and three more of the old art so you get a place of them if you get top four top two get the uncut sheet and then the champion gets the gold i'll get say championship 2023 golden card volume one and a winner plate mat so that does seem really really nice and we'll get another look because we do have a look at see we do have like pictures to show what it all looks like so for the the championship selection pack so it's a really weird one because it's got some really bad choices like we got some of these are not great choices so you've got a reprint of the demogra the atrop goat vegeta for vegeto reprint of the doria the Majin boo which is already had a load of Little reprints already. The Vegeta for trunk, uh, yellow trunks. The one drop Goku for SS4, and seven drop Android 16. That's not too bad of a reprint, considering like it's only from the um evolution booster. And then a never reprint of the S4 cost trunks over them. So seven, well, there was like eight cards that aren't great that are reprinted in this pack that you can potentially pull. Or you get one of also you got five new cards also coming normal foiling and um gold foiling. So you got one for Broly swap support. I think people have like tried to squint in and find the effects of them, but I'm just gonna wait until they're actually properly revealed so we can see the actual effect to see what it actually says on the card. So we got the one red one for red broly for the broly swap deck, the blue trunks for the blue reboot trunk deck, the green curl cooler, which I think seems to be for people speculating a generic green card the yellow sin for the yellow sin deck and the vegeta for just black decks in general which i think what people have said it seems like a upgrade of the dark broly over realm in that it has combo power and does the exact thing so those are the championship selection pack cards and then here's a better look at the offline exclusive edition so if you get the if you go to an offline regional you get a this is what's in the pack, so those five cards just more than likely to pull these cards than some of the other crap cards they had in the pack. And in a little bit more of a foil looking as well, so a bit more foiling on them. So that's that. And in the event pack 11, we see the cards in fact are event pack 11. So we got the Android 18 Speed Substitution card, SR, for the Android decks. We got Petrification, get a reprint. I think the first time it's got, actually got reprint, and you get a more foil looking. We got the a really bad, like not the Vegeta that probably people want. People probably wanted Fang Feng Greet in here, but probably wanted to put Feng Greet and put the wrong one here. But we got the the other Vegeta overall. Not sure why it's in. We got the SR of the set that's being well, the one that's get, getting the gold foiling on it. Because remember, every time we get out of Ed Pack for the last um, three, four times, they've had one card being like having some gold foiling, where the other ones just get normal, the normal foiling. And this is this looks to be the Son Goku Return of the Dragon Fist. This will be the one that has the little gold foiling on it, like we saw with the red Vegeta in uh, the last few of them. Uh, what's the one of the other event packs we've had? Then we got a just Beerus motivated destruction. So it seems like they've looked at the old for format and reprinted some stuff a bit too late, which is not great. Like this is nice to have the reprint of motivated destruction, but you got an SPR, and I much rather would have have the SPR than this version of it. Reprint of Hasty Dispatch Dispo, that's not too, that's not too bad. And that's a card that hasn't had a reprint yet. And it's quite hard to locate because it's a draft box card. Say with Jiren here, because Turn of the Tide is not banned. And if Turn of the Tide gets banned, this kind of becomes a little bit pointless. And then Bad Eye decided to only reprint in this the red and blue D Magic 8 cards being Mai and Borgo. So no reprint of the black, yellow, or green one. Because those colors don't matter at the moment. Because these two are the main colors in the format so far for the last format of it. Or format or two, and then a copy of Omen Awake can be repeated. The never card that has been repeated that's actually a pretty good card. Um, if you're playing red, so not the greatest pick, but some still decent picks from most. Like, it covers most things, just no, nothing that really that green wanted. Like green, nothing. Well, nothing really for green outside the hasty dispatch, but some nice cards for the other colors, kind of. Then we got the winner cards for this first seat, first part of the 2023 regional season. So we got the Trunks Clammy Challenger, the one that was seen running in um, Devol's uh, Crimson Neck when he won the yeah the US Nationals because uh, it searched Tapion um, 
Utopia on Unison. Then we've got the Piccolo Summon ability, the first time that's out of a Judge card that has been reprinted, so that's quite cool. Like it only got it only got it was only in the draft box and reprinted as a judge card, not reprinted outside of that, but now it has a never reprint, but in a like a nice looking pro promo foil. And then like what people a lot of people wanted, they got the Sun Goku called Leora being reprinted to go along with the Vegeta one. So I'm gonna look forward to getting a playset of the Piccolo and the Goku. The Goku to go with my Vegetas and the Piccolo from my Piccolo deck. So really nice ones, and that's only for the first lot of it. And then the golden card, so now when the winner of a regional, whether it's offline or online, wins a championship 2023 golden card. And for the first one, it's a golden version of the reboot SS3 Goku lead. And it's only gold on the awakened side, not on the front side, but that's pretty interesting. Not like the ones we get at um, our finals, but still this is quite nice and an interesting thing they're doing now for the regionals, which is quite cool. And then we've got the uncut sheet as well, like we had before, uncut sheet, and then the top eight uh, serial number card, or the European exclusive version. So we've got those. And then we've got the storage box as well. As well, so we've got the storage box for Galactic Battle, the first ever set, for Power Absorbed, and for Dawn of Z Legend. No, not one for um, set 19, because, yeah, set 19 happened in it, but they're covering the first um, first set. With a storage box instead of the f all three of these Enkai, set, Enkai series sets, which is an odd choice. And then we got the winners as well, the winner playmat as well. So this is the playmat being a winner one with the art from the set 20. So that's all the regionals. So if you aren't, does this interest in you go and actually play in the regional events? I think so far America have got eight set up, off online ones and one offline one. For the next few months so far for europe we've only been shown the offline one in march and the online on the well the online one in march and the offline one in april so if you want to check this out head to the bandai website link will be in the description below to check out that so where they are and then we got the webcam locals results from this week as well so on friday we had the webcam locals we had a great 18 players i think there's most we've had uh, well, the second like highest turnout we've had since we since I started it last year, and we got a fair few people and a fair fairly diverse one as well. So we got a, quite a few different um, decks shown in, quite a few different ones. Not too many massive meta decks, more fun ones. And I think the highest represented decks were there were three Deborah Swap, uh, one of them believe myself, and three AOD as well because AOD got support. So we had the first place being taken by Joe from Team T and Bill, going 5-0 with his green caller. And then second place we had Son of Paragus being Sam from our team, Team Minus 2, coming in fourth, uh, second, sorry, going 4-1 with AOD. You have MTK as well, coming in on third place, 4-1 with Gamma, being the only ever 4-1 uh, version. And we had a, quite a fair few of free twos in there, we had quite a lot of people, and we played five rounds, because it was over 16 people. And we had Big Notation, another member of Team Minus 2 coming in 4th with his Token Tower deck with 3-2. Then myself in 3rd place with the Boris Swap for Team Minus 2. Then another Team Minus 2 uh, teammate, being Peter Dance, coming in 6th with his Reboot Beerus. Then we had AF Chicken with his Hatchet coming in 3-2 as well, quite a, uh, quite a strong Hatchet deck. Kind of got me wanting to play Hatchet myself again. Then we got Giovanni Castaban, a uh, fantastic player. And one of the Castaman brothers playing Reboot Soul coming in eighth. We got Remigo playing Crimson Goku, so one of the more meta decks coming in as well. Well, yeah, more of the, like top meta decks coming in, coming in three two. Then we got Tom from Deck Planet, Ira Torum, one of the ever the more swaps going three two coming in tenth as well. And then for the last lot, we've got eleventh being C Duck with his Bulma deck coming in three two. And then that goes down to the people who didn't get a positive record. So we got Mecha Goku with Yellow Sin, I think first time playing as well, going in two three. Then we got Dan the Man returning with his Gotenks SH going 2 3 as well. Then we got another newcomer being Rockhead67 who came with AOD going 1 4. Josh coming in with his, another member of Team Depth Planet coming in with his Green Caller going 1 4. So uh, quite a difference in the, from the Evergreen Caller. And then we have Claire, another newcomer as well, came in with AOD going 1 4. Liz McCon being the Ever person who went to Boris Swap because the week before. Uh, we were sat talking, waiting for the other game to finish, but we started talking about the Boris Swap and kind of had a little like pack to play the Boris Swap this week to bring it quite fun. I think there was a, a few differences in each of our lists. 
and he ended up going in 17th 1-4 and then we got President Eric returning as well with Setsu Vegito going 0-5 and while it's not the best record he did have a quite an interest on in this like watching the the end of one of his games he had a fairly interesting list with some quite cool techs that actually seemed quite quite interesting so that is it for this week's info about the reveals the 2023 season and the webcam locals so thank you for watching feel free to like comment subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now